Welcome to TradeTheNBI.com. This is John's report for the 21st of April. You know, it's not every day you get to watch systems markets unravel and fall apart. Now, it doesn't look like it on the chart, but if you don't recognize the systemic issues of what we just saw happen the other day as oil futures traded negative for the first time ever, um, you're not really paying attention to the calamity that we're facing. Now, yes, we're still dealing with the fact that you know, when a central government decides that there are thresholds that they're going to uh, support securities, they're going to support securities. Now, there reaches a point, and this happened in you know 29 before the crash as well, where they got together with the big names and said, okay, hey, let's all get together and uh, you know help support the market. But at a certain point, it becomes sort of... Uh, impossible to do and you become overwhelmed now if we reach that point no but it's hilarious when you're looking at a red doc that's just flatlining even though you're seeing price making significant you know downward moves in that so there's just are there going to be any buying interest it is not a whole lot uh, the question just is where is that floor and where do they keep adjusting it uh, because at a certain point you end up with too much of something and what do you do you keep writing Billions and billions more. Is the federal government going to buy everything? It's a question. Oh, you know what I did have? This happens to be um, PNT2. I think the other day I had on just the regular page. When I'm doing programming, I uh, sometimes will just turn off all of these programs because when you update it, it wants to do every single chart and it just slows things down. So sometimes I'll just put the regular DOCON paint. It's very similar to this exact uh, same chart configuration, it's just, uh, instead of the being blue, it's a GAM candle um, that shows up there. Which is the original yellow, and like this. In fact, uh, this is the regular Theocon. And you can see, you know, from the initial weakness, which is the magenta candle, we've had the, well, falling three methods, which theoret theoretically, you come down and then creates a new leg up. Uh, here in the NASDAQ, though, you do have this, what I look for, um, we've talked about this before, when you have gold rising in that, and then you get the secondary azure, it's like, I like to wait for when they meet, is usually an indication that things have started to slow off. In this particular case, then you had blue rising to it. Now, they've all met here, and potentially you're seeing the first lower shakeout below. Um, so whether that has more systemic uh, power, um, you're not seeing a whole lot of short activity. You're really just not seeing much of anything. Uh, find there are no short-term buyers in that, but uh, volatility swings are still there, and uh, I think they're only going to get exacerbated because as they start to reopen things, you're going to realize how complex and problematic that is because of the disruptions and the dislocations and the, still the inability for people to move about freely and, you know, here's an interesting one, interstate commerce. It's something that was like a given um, under, you know, the, the federalist system that had been established in America. Uh, it's shot to pieces where you have, you know, some borders being, you know, uh, surveilled and or, you know, uh, locked down uh, different policies in different states. Uh, There's just a whole host of calamities. The same thing is happening here in Europe with the... Um, uh, EU and I think everyone's starting to recognize the collapse of the EU is just getting closer and closer by the day uh, that we're holding at a 108 with uh, uh, zero economic activity in Europe in general I mean I find Germany starting to go back um, but certainly not uh, Italy even though they're talking about doing it uh, in another you know few days um, you know the beginning of the month it still isn't going to have an impact when you're not allowing travelers and visitors, when you have an economy that's based on both tourism and export, uh, it's impossible. So, you know, it's a beating a dead horse just describing this stuff, but you can see um, within what we've got, I mean, these are completely negative readings and uh, frankly, it should be going lower, but again, you know, central government. So here's the USO portion of it. Uh, it's down another 21% uh, pre-market already. Um, no, no shock there. I mean, but, and this was an interesting one because this, before you get all, you know, freaked out about it, we've been talking about this for, you know, a couple of weeks ago. We said, hey, you're getting to a point where there's just nowhere to store this stuff. 
So you reach the end of the contract, and with futures contracts, you get delivery. It's the same different with pork bellies, corn, wheat. You actually get the product, and people couldn't take the product because there's nowhere left to put the oil. It just, it, it's all tied up. So what do you do? I mean, I don't even know if, how it's a good deal for America if they bought it, but uh, they were paying people to take it off their hands because what are you going to do? And if things don't get ramped back up, and I think that's part of the criteria for seeing things move forward because um, you know, when you're talking global collapse of everything, um, this is how it starts. Now, before we get all parabolic on things, we have to recognize, too, that as things start back up, and while there are the dislocations, you're, you're going to see continued massive unemployment. You're going to see a real problem until there's a way to figure out how you can move people about uh, freely without fear and in the context of just normal behavior. Um, gold is still going to be a... Uh, significant uh, player in this as a store of value. Uh, you know, the people who are talking about it jumping to astronomical numbers, this is way early for that. Um, I think they're wishing upon a star that just hasn't quite developed because at a certain point, uh, holding on to the commodity of gold isn't going to do you any good when there's a social breakdown. And that's, I think, what you're looking at next. Uh, uh, you'd reached a point where people were particularly free people fed up with being contained um, when the reality is the at-risk population is very small. Uh, whereas if you had just done like Sweden and some of these other places and contained people who are at high risk, that would have made more sense because eventually everyone's going to get the virus one way or another. It's going to be unavoidable unless you decide to live in a bubble, uh, which really is impossible. So from an intraday standpoint on the 5K, uh, we ended up with uh, some nice dips, and then we ended up with the um, yellow candle here. Not a super great setup with uh, no steel reset and everything. It did have a nice power mode too with the cross, I and mean, that was a perfect uh, configuration right there within the weakness, and it just kept staying below. But always within that, when I see this going across, I'm always looking for that next break of the um, DOC red. And then, of course, shake out, getting above that negative 13, and it just kept building and building. And then finally, orange dipped. Boom, spike started. And it carried through. Um, and then you started to get warnings that, you know, continued, uh, well, bullish setups. And, you know, this is an interesting thing about the, the Sigma events when you see them happen uh, like this, particularly when you get such a uh, uh, separated divergence, uh, where it's like, in this case, the green spikes above uh, within the negative, fine, you're within the negative press there, but then immediately you're getting a bullish read uh, from a pivot in the Azure, and, that, and that's what turned it around. And so I always tell you, stay with where the Azure is going and then look for those key cross points. Um, as impact areas, just like you saw here, because this fits exactly with what we look for from a bullish pivot, and then boom, the cross, and it, you know, this is where it's going to um, add to the strength of those GAM signals and that, because it comes completely separate of uh, any of the other readings and how they're derived. But as we got up towards the peaks of it and things were, you know, seemingly okay, the oil uh, debacle started to build and uh, we started to get the magenta candles. Um, and there's a difference when you look at some of these uh, setups going through, like in particular here where, uh, you know, you've had this long series of no steel reset and you get a quick little move of the steel going down and you're thinking, oh, I want a short there. And I think we talked about this one exactly on the Skype chat. And it's like, well, now with my rising um, red DOC uh, in continuation, it's just a little early. Uh, I want to see a rollover of the red in that before I'm really getting excited about uh, the potential for it short. And then as soon as we started to actually see that kind of uh, roll setup, you were still ending up with um, pretty strong. Red DOC, it wasn't breaking down and rolling over, and then boom, we ended up with the Sigma event here with the bullish uptick, and then as soon as the bullish uptick went, boom, uh, we went to the, the highs right there. However, what does it do? It starts to make positive extremes, starting right there around the 2893. Now, we had already had um, positive extreme uh, 
setups. We were looking somewhere in the twenty-seven ninety-five range uh, when we were talking about it uh, in pre-market. And is there any shock that as we moved back towards the end of the day, we end up boom right there it was the twenty-seven ninety-four range, um, previous positive extreme. So there you have it. That. It, it, <laughs> it doesn't always work out easy, but they end up working it out in that direction. And um, clearly, we ended up with some nice rollover points. And uh, every time we started to get uh, any version of a turn around, you weren't getting the uh, pivot with the crosses at the same time. So they were generally weak. You know, I always look at these situations right here, uh, and I'm, you know, checking to make sure I'm getting a strong positive move to the shakeout. Usually, I want to see it turn. Uh, to the green side, particularly when I'm at the 50%, because rollovers, um, like I say, red DOC at zero level, right in here, when you get up there, starts to roll over there, you got problems. I mean, you need to be over that 50% to see that kind of rollover reset uh, do very well, and then usually the, the big plummet, of course. Um, always watching right here when you need that minus 23 dip uh, for a pop, but when it starts and it's unable to hold, boom, you've got your reversal signal. And then it just, it hits right, you know, you get the rejection right there of the cyan green and complete confirmation right there as it breaks down. And in this case, it didn't go a whole lot. It just kind of traded sideways for the longest time until people could figure out what's going on because then you had Congress talking about the additional bailout money for small business. So that kind of went through, but it's, it's still not gonna help, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, there's just a lot of difficulties uh, ahead, and I think that to not recognize that, uh, you'd be confused. So I, I think you got to be uh, generally more bearish than bullish is my view on it. Um, certainly, there are going to be spikes on short cover rallies, and that's how the market is going to do it. So it's not one of those blanket where you say short the moon like the, the first call up in the 3300. That was... That was pretty easy because it was like uh, they, nobody was expecting to have to intervene, blah, blah, blah. But once you got them actually saying they were going to intervene and in a significant way, I mean, that changed the dynamic of stuff. So now you're just going to have your short up bursts and you're just going to pick when we get our nice little signals for shorting and take advantage of those as we get them. That'll be how that plays out. But uh, I think the broader view of uh, when these earnings and stuff start to be reported. There's just not going to be any mistaking um, that you're not going to want to own some of these businesses, regardless of whether the market's trying to hold up uh, the price tag for them and that. So at the end of the day, we'll take it one trade at a time. As always, though, trade well. We'll talk in later.